What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out the fifth man WWE Survivor Series leak Gunther Berry's WWE legend, Rey Mysterio's injury, and other wrestling news. Man, Survivor Series is right around the corner. There's a lot of speculation of if Randy Orton is uh going to be one of the members uh for the baby faces in the uh, uh survivor series war games match for the men's side of things also is cm punk making his return to wwe at survivor series definitely some speculation that's been going on there so we're gonna see what's going on with um all the other wrestling news on top of that appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel let's get right what's into going this on, guys one, it is wrestlemia here back, back with some more, more news. news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including a huge survivor series rumor gunther berry's wwe hall of fame of the ultimate warrior logan paul admits he nearly killed Rey mysterio cm punk turns up his trolling game to level 1000 and much more be sure to subscribe right. and hit that notification bell for daily see what's going on here man follow us on facebook for exclusive i want to see what they have to also say also check out our new website wrestleamia.com and now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story <clears throat> our first story looks at a big survivor series rumor at top of today's <clears throat> news is a rumor concerning Survivor Series War Games and its men's War Games match. Now, if you want to avoid any possible spoilers, please skip to our next story. Alright. Now, this rumor concerns the possible addition of a fifth man to the men's match and who is expected to fill the role if the match goes from two four man teams to two five man teams. While the WWE hasn't announced that the men's War Games match will be a five on five encounter, there's speculation that Drew mm -hmm. McIntyre will join the Judgment Day team, leading to the baby facing having to seek help. Mm -hmm. WWE.com's hype page for the men's War Games match currently lists the team of Seth Freakin' Rollins, Jey Uso, Cody Rhodes, and Sami Zayn stepping into the double cage against the Judgment Day's Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, and JD. However, who will join the four faces if Drew joins? But whilst it's unknown who will join the babyfaces, a new Fightful Select report states that we're told a fifth member of the babyface side of War Games is slated to be announced before Survivor Series itself. Okay, that's Recent good. Recent speculation that's good. suggested Kevin Owens could make a special appearance, rejoining his BFF, Sami Zayn. However, with rumors suggesting mm -hmm. Randy Orton is returning before or at Survivor Series, could the Viper make his timely arrival? If there is a fifth man, this leaves the door open for a big reveal on Raw, SmackDown, or even on Survivor Series. Yeah. If you caught yesterday's news video, you know that Cody Rhodes told the Judgment Day after Raw went off the air that he has friends too, mm -hmm. leading the fans chanting Randy Orton. Yep. If the WWE wants to maximize the suspense, they'll keep the fifth man's identity a secret until right before the men's War Games match. Who do you think will be the fifth member? I can Let's see them doing that. Uh, I mean, it... It doesn't make sense to give it away. Granted, you know, I believe Survivor Series is already sold out anyway. So, um, but to add more hype to it, I think they're going to, you know, pretty much like kind of keep it, keep it like hidden. Like people can speculate, but they're going to probably keep it hidden. Would people be okay if Randy Orton was announced as with the potential fifth member on Monday Night Raw, the go home show? I'm sure people would appreciate it. I know I would appreciate it, but I think it would have that better feel if we just heard his music. You know, Cody said, oh, if you think we were down a member, we're actually not. And then Cody enlisting the help with uh of randy orton now some of y'all have actually said and I, I think this is a very interesting dynamic if they do have randy orton come in and help them randy orton technically should still have s some type of beef with jay because jay and jimmy the you know the bloodline when he was in the bloodline per storyline wise is the reason why randy orton's been gone so long because they took him out and then they were feuding with matt riddle so it would be interesting to see if he does come back what's what type of dynamic and energy is he gonna have with jay considering they have issues that that could be a very interesting storyline within itself just having randy orton back just off rip creates some interesting stories that you can see potentially happen on, on monday night raw going forward so we'll see if that happens but i do think they'll probably wait just to have that bigger pop that bigger crowd reaction uh to you know announce who will be the fifth survivor series member if they do go with the five on five 
let us know in the comments down below. Could be interesting. Up, Looking forward Gunther to it. Gunther buries WWE Hall of Famer. A current Intercontinental Champion, Gunther, is riding high as the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion in WWE history. As he should, man. It looks like his recent harsh remarks towards Bret the Hitman Hart were just the beginning. The Ring General recently appeared on the <clears> WWE's <throat> talk show The Bump and buried the Ultimate Warrior. Oh, those uh -oh. are the real dark ages. He's a showman. He's not an athlete, not a professional wrestler. Damn. He's a showman. Now everybody knows why I have to be the one to keep this title for the longest time in history to wash its reputation clean and Damn. set a new standard. While some of Gunther's comments towards the Ultimate Warrior could have been kayfabe, the former IC champion and WWF champion has been criticized for many things in and out of the ring, including a noticeable lack of wrestling ability. In the Warriors' defense, he competed at a time when WWF when showmanship was arguably more important than mm -hmm. wrestling ability, particularly in the main event. Next I, up, I, I can see him just kind of playing up as his character, you know, keeping the kayfabe alive. You know, he's one, he's the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion, so he has this type of, uh, you know, I, what's the word, bravado about himself. And he looks at, you know, some of the past competitors as like jokes in comparison to him. So to big up himself in the Intercontinental Championship, don't have a problem with it. If he, it seems like he's just kind of playing it up character wise. I mean, and that's good though. I'm, I'm all here for it. Talk your shit, Walter. <laughs> Logan Paul admits. Well, I mean, my bad. Gunther. Mysterio. Gunther. <laughs> A current United States champion, Logan Paul, is setting the record straight on what happened at Crown Jewel when Rey yeah, Mysterio Yeah, this was a wild spot, spot right here, him, saving him from what looked like would have been a nasty bump. Logan discussed this on his impulsive podcast, saying, "I'm going to come clean because I've seen all the positive headlines." Logan says, "Rey uh -huh. Mysterio." The Mexican community is going crazy. They're praising me, saying I'm some sort of hero. I'm like, dang, I'm getting recognized for something cool. I'll take it. Then I looked at the clip upon assessing my performance. While I think I did save Rey Mysterio, I think I almost killed Rey Mysterio. Logan went on to explain why he thinks he was part of the reason Rey almost got pulverized with a bad bump. I think it was too far back for the move. Mm -hmm. I think he didn't clear enough ground for the move. That's what happened. I was too far back. He didn't clear enough ground. We both made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I had to catch him. I had to catch him. I wasn't going to not catch him. But truthfully, while I liked the headlines and I was getting gassed up, I was just doing my job. I'll take the praise. Logan's yeah, there was there was a lot of people saying, oh, we got to praise Logan Paul, Logan Paul for saving Ray when actually Logan was not in the right spot himself. So it was kind of a misjudgment on where Logan needed to be. But granted, it was a good thing that he was still able to catch Ray, you know, so I, I'll take that. You know, it's crazy saying Logan Paul is the in, the United States champion. That's fucking mind blowing. <laughs> said he's dealing with knee problems, and the save could have been bad news for his knees. Thankfully, both men managed to avoid any injury. Next up, Rey Mysterio injury update. Now, speaking of Rey, the Hall of Famer underwent knee surgery after Crown Jewel, and now fans are getting a better idea of why Rey needed the surgery as well as why mm. he should be back. Rey was written off TV on the 10th of every yeah. edition of SmackDown after Santos Escobar turned heel, attacking Rey and kayfabe injuring him. Now, House of Wrestling has an exclusive report on the situation. House of Wrestling has learned that Mysterio had been working through a torn meniscus for wow. about three months. The injury has slowly worsened, so we agreed to lose the United States Championship oh. to Paul and participate in the beatdown angle before heading off for his knee operation. He is expected to be out of action for around six to eight weeks while he recovers and will likely resume his feud with Escobar when he returns. Oh, when he's that makes sense. That makes sense. I was very surprised they dropped the title to him, but he's been working with an injury for months, and it makes sense. Like I said, I didn't have a problem with Logan winning. It made sense. And you you have a new potential new program once Ray comes back from injury and is fully healed. He can have that program with Escobar. So it, it makes sense why things played out the way they did. Easy expected. That's to crazy, be back. man. If everything goes to plan, the timeline will allow Mysterio to be available for the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 40 season. Yeah. There have been rumors of Ray renewing his feud with his wayward son Dominic as WrestleMania approaches. One common story is that his estranged father and son will work a mask versus hair match at WrestleMania 40. Next mm. up, CM Punk turns up his trolling game to level 1000. Me personally, I wouldn't have a problem if they revisited the feud, but it has to be done right. I don't know if it should be another WrestleMania match, um, but I will say what they could do with Escobar going forward, that could definitely catapult him because right now he's kind of just one member of uh lwo but that could definitely help him get some type of momentum going forward depending on how they set this up with him 
and uh, Ray once he come back from injury. Looking forward to that feud potentially being something good there. Now, if you think CM Punk's exhausted his bag of tricks teasing fans about a WWE return, well, think again. Mm -mm -mm. Wrestling Straight Edge Superstar recently up his <clears throat> troll game on social media, teasing a possible return to WWE. Of course he did, AEW. of course. CM Punk put up a video on his Instagram account, presumably of his workout, with the song of War Pigs, which is actually the theme song for Survivor Series. Wow. But not only that, but Punk burns 666 calories. Maybe a nod to the devil. What the hell? That was just a start, though, as Punk later posted a video on Instagram oh, showing himself with devil horns and a message, who better than me to play in the devil's playground? The video showed a brief clip of what looks like war games with the obvious implication that Punk could return to AEW or WWE. Mm. Whether he returns or not, he's still the master troll. Oh yeah, he's definitely he's definitely hamming it up, trolling it up. It's going to be very interesting. Very, very interesting. Next up, Bianca Belair wants a dream match with Charlotte Flair. Now, Bianca Belair wants a match with Charlotte Flair and according to Belair, it could be her biggest yet. While the EST and Charlotte are currently more busy fighting damage control, Bella says she thinks a match between her and the Queen could be big. Oh well, yeah, for sure. In the casual conversations with the classic explaining, there hasn't been one big match yet and we're all waiting for it. It was a non-finish, so we never actually had a legit feud and singles match. That's at the top of my list. Of course, right now it's EO Sky, getting my title from EO Sky. Hands down, she's a champion right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going for her. As Wrestling News pointed out, they've worked only three singles matches since 2020. Their mm. first match was in February 2020 in NXT, while their second outing was on October 21st episode of Raw, and their third encounter was late that month on Raw. Now this may seem hard to believe, especially since this was during a period when Vince McMahon was still in creative and endless rematches were par for the course. Yeah. Whether this was by design or just unfortunate circumstances, it means that when the two do square off, it'll be a huge match. After all, Bella has been nothing short of dominant since jumping to the main roster. She's also battled some of WWE's biggest names, including mm -hmm. a long rivalry with Becky Lynch, as well as a feud with Bayley. She went on to say, but like a bigger picture. Because for me, when I first came into WWE, Charlotte was one of the first people that I looked up to. She has Ric Flair as her dad, but she came into WWE with zero wrestling experience. She was a collegiate athlete, so I saw myself in her. I remember being in NXT and being like, from everywhere Charlotte is, I want to have a match with her. She explained why she sees the match as something special. And I think Belair versus Flair, that's a big match. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping for that one day it happens. I look forward to that day it happens because we're like one person I've kept away from for the most part. We had a triple threat. We've done some tag teams together. I just feel like it's two different generations. And it's like for us to collide at the mountaintop. And she's the only horsewoman I've not defeated yet. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of that match? Let us know in the comments down below. And I like that. I, I like that. She's the only horsewoman. I have not defeated yet. She's defeated Sha Sasha. Uh, she's defeated Bailey. She just she's defeated Becky. She has not been able to get the job done against Charlotte, and I think that's a that's definitely a WrestleMania match. They built that correctly. That's a WrestleMania match, potentially for sure. You know, it's it's it could be something good there. So we'll see how they build towards that. Very interested, very interested in seeing that potentially happen at some point. And finally, Top Dollar's planned PLE match against Michael Cole. What? Last but not least, Top Dollar is no longer in WWE, but apparently the big man from Hit Row was working with Michael Cole in a match that would have taken place at a PLE. Yeah, you heard that right. What? Top Dollar and Michael Cole could have met at a PLE, with Top Dollar outlining how things were supposed to play out in the ring. Fans may recall Michael Cole used to berate Top Dollar at SmackDown. Of course, and it was great. The plan match was the reason for this. Top Dollar noted on X that wait until the idiots realized me and Michael was working together and y'all was too dead to catch on. Michael Cole is a real one. He continued saying me and Cole wanted a match at a PLE. We even had it planned out. I throw him around for five minutes. I get cocky and get distracted by any wrestler here and he beats me with a small package. Now Cole hasn't wrestled since wow. 2012 so fans can only imagine the amount of ring rust he had. Oh my Nonetheless, god. Nonetheless Cole can boast that he's undefeated at Wrestlemania. <laughs> they have it folks, the wildest new story. I don't know if I would have wanted to see that but Michael Cole commentary has been so fantastic as of late. It's very enjoyable and when he gets upset and mad it's some of the funniest stuff. Like legitimately some of the just grade a entertaining so i don't know if i would have personally wanted to see it at a ple or anything like that but at the same time would i have loved to just hear michael cole berate him as the match is building up 
anytime he's seen top dollar he just talks about just talks trash about him i definitely would have been okay with that man i don't know <laughs> that that would have been an interesting one but this is a newsworthy video once again we're not sure if randy orton's gonna be that fifth member potentially to help out the baby faces in their war games match who knows but it creates that intrigue and excitement for survivor series man they're continuing that excitement last year we saw the bloodline uh so a war games survivors or oh, war games match at survivor series that was that was just an event in itself this year we got the judgment day and what's going to happen there the the power struggle between uh the baby faces and judgment day on raw like it's it's very interesting and surprise returners surprise returns are potentially on the horizon which makes this survivor series that much more highly anticipated i'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen so comment down below let me know who do you guys feel like will be that mystery person is it gonna be randy orton returning back to give people the rkos that they so rightfully deserve we'll see him punk be in that spot who knows let me know down below because he um i mean cody did say i do have friends and he does know uh you know cm punk so that could be i don't know if they consider each other friends but you know that could be someone he's alluding to too it, you never know let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel road to 150k and i'm still in the speedy youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace